This is the Art Marketing Minute with Eric Rhodes, author of the Amazon best-selling book, Make More Money Selling Your Art. In the Marketing Minute, we answer your questions to help your art career. Brought to you by artmarketing.com, the place to go to learn more about marketing. Now, here's your host, art magazine publisher, Eric Rhodes. Thank you, Jim Kipping, and thank you for joining us today. I am here. My goal is to eliminate the idea of the starving artist. So let's get right to today's questions. This question comes from Jane in Truckee, California, who says, I have a question about art licensing. She says, I was contacted last week by a company that's interested in licensing a collection of my artwork as a wholesaler of G. Clay's. I currently sell my originals and G. Clay's of my artwork to two small galleries here in Tahoe and Truckee. After thinking about it, I've decided the only way I could do it is to create a new collection of paintings only for the purpose of licensing the images and keep it entirely separate from my other work. I don't want to get any static from my current collectors. Do you know anything about licensing and what do you think I should do? Do artists commonly do this? Will it hurt or help? Well, first off, I'm not so sure you need to worry about static from your collectors. It's going to be an honor. If they own the original and you're doing uh, G. Clay's of the original and selling them into thousands and thousands of places, I think they're going to feel pretty special about that because they own the original. And the people who own the G. Clay's that you have, those are personalized, numbered, so they're going to be a lot different. So licensing is a really good opportunity, Jane, and it's an honor to be invited in. Imagine what could happen to your career if your paintings are on mouse pads and mugs and calendars and shirts and all kinds of things. It's a big deal to be invited in. I have some friends that did licensing, and it really made their careers. I think it's a huge deal, and if you're getting invited in, that's good. The thing is that they're asking you to license the images they've seen. They might not like the new series, but if they like these Give it a shot. What have you got to lose, really? Get a good attorney to represent you and get you a good licensing contract, get you the best deal. But also, it can be steady income for years. In fact, next week, I've got an attorney on the podcast that can help you with some clues about this. Anyway, I have friends who do it. They love it. They make lots of money. Not not always a ton, but some years it's lean. Some years it's extra money. Some years it's big money, you just never know. But it's an honor to be invited, and I would, quite frankly, I'd consider going for it. Next question comes from Annie in Nashville, Tennessee, who says, is it okay to get a day job to help pay my bills? I worry that this might make me seem like an amateur instead of a pro. Annie, I'm not so sure anybody cares if you're an amateur or a pro. I'm not so sure anybody's going to know They care about your paintings and what you're producing, and they'll see you on your website. You don't have to say anything about having a job. We all have to pay the bills and do whatever it takes. Many well-known artists quietly have other jobs to pay the bills. There's no shame. No one needs to know. Frankly, nobody cares. We all have to make a living. We all have to do what we do to make ends meet. Why not get a job doing what you love, though? If you could get a job working, with paintings, being around, uh, you know, somebody who prints G. Clay's or somebody uh, like a gallery, work at a gallery, and you'll learn about how art sells, inform your work, find out what people want. I mean, there, you might as well try to stay in the industry. And I think that, you know, I've always had this philosophy that if you have to work, do something that you love. If you have to work, do something that is in the range of what you love. So, for instance, I, yeah, I have a friend who needed to make some extra money. He actually did a painting for another artist who was a pretty well-known artist who needed somebody who could copy his style, and he was not ashamed of it at all because he copied his style. Uh, He sold them. He got paid a salary, and he didn't put his own name on them, but they were not in his style, and he was at least he was painting. He was getting better hand-eye coordination. He was painting. Every painting you do is going to make you better, and so, you know, if you can be painting for a living and and making some money on it, why not? I think it's okay. Don't worry about what other other people think. Stop worrying about what other people think, as a matter of fact. Well, this has been the Art Marketing Minute with me, Eric Rhodes. My goal in life is to eliminate the idea of the starving artist and to help your dreams actually come true. So if you want to submit questions, simply email eric 
at artmarketing.com. And to learn more about marketing ideas, you can visit artmarketing.com. Thanks for listening.